Welcome to the Eloquist channel. This is class number 15 in the discourse. Bishosha Hekedimu 5672. This is the first mimer, and this whole first discourse is was dedicated Lushus Erefua Shalema for Avram ben Parvin, maybe completely well amongst all the ill of Israel and all the blessings for his family. Thank you. So we were holding over here in the middle of chapter 3, in the middle of Perek Gimel, and I skipped at the beginning the parentheses, so let me just, you know, give you, let's catch up, just pick up where we were yesterday. In this, ch in, in last chapter, we were learning that there's a concept called Orpnimi. Orpnimi means a light that goes into a vessel, and how the vessels and the light affect each other, how they join together, how they become one. In this chapter, he's explaining the 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 real reason the last we had the the facts this is what happens but what's the reason for it how can this how can the the energy and the vessels become so attached to each other and that is because essentially this power of the soul from its very origins is a limited power inside an infinite soul the soul has it has an addition to its ability to to, re, to to emanate and reveal and to project a radiance, a light that reflects the soul itself. That is the soul, as we discussed yesterday, the neshama itself is undefined, unlimited, un, be, without any uh, without any um, anything that would characterize it and and, and define it. Uh, and therefore the soul, the soul in a sense is limitless. And therefore, an energy, an emanation of the neshama, of the soul, would also be limitless. We do have that, as discussed yesterday. That's the experience of will. Will is a power of pure soul, pure drive. Because will is not specified this or that, even though we will discuss it in other times. The will could be directed towards something specific. Every will has something specific that you want. You want to eat, you want to sleep, you want to draw, do art, you want to learn, you want to study, you want to accomplish, you want what, whatever it is that you want, but that's already not in the will itself. Will itself is simple. It's pure drive. So will, and uh, um, that is a emanation of the power of the soul itself, and that's why as explained other places in Hasidus, the power of will overpowers every other power. It's the most powerful power or the most powerful force within the human being. As we say, Ein dover omed bifnei haratzo, nothing can stand and block will because will is the most reflective of the soul itself. It's actually an emanation, a radiance of the pure, unadulterated energy of the soul. However, um, that's will. But then there are, the soul also projects particular powers of the soul, like the power of vision, the power to hear, power of intelligence, power of emotions, and so on and so forth. These particular powers of the soul are particular koichas. They're called koichas anefesh, powers of the soul. And the soul itself, they are not the, 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 the soul is not a composite, as we discussed yesterday, of many different powers. The soul is a simple energy, but the soul contains within itself all these powers. Because the soul is limitless, it has to have also the ability to be able to affect in a limited fashion. So Hashem embedded in the soul 10 powers. Now, if the soul's, if the neshama, if the soul contains these powers, these koichai sanefesh, these powers, um, in the soul, if the koiches and nefesh are in the soul, then that means that in the soul, there is besides the soul itself, there are these limited powers. However, we discussed yesterday, and I know this is abstract and it's difficult to understand, that these powers, as they are in the neshama itself, are not specified, defined, and 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 um, and uh, characterized. They're not. They don't exist in a definable manner. Over there, they all melt away in the greater energy, in the simple energy of the soul. Although, in the benign of the benign, in a non-existence existence, 
I might, I might say it if you can imagine this, in a non-existent state of existence, they exist in the soul. They exist in the soul that in a manner that in the soul itself, you will never see the power of intelligence, the power of Chachma, the power of Bina, the power of, you won't see it. You'll see a plain, simple energy, but it's there. It's there to the degree that if it will emanate outward, it will emanate a particular power. Chachma, Bina, these called an Arpnimi. It's a limited power swimming in an infinite and and lost, if you might say, and included in an infinite soul. So as he, the words he used yesterday, we learned, is that the kochos are not the essence of the soul. The soul itself is mufshat. It's separated. It's removed from any specific particular koch. But the soul is noise kochos. It carries these kochos. It's like it's impregnated with particular kochos inside of it, but they're not identifiable when they're inside the soul, when the soul is impregnated, so to speak, with these kochos, they are not in a state of an identifiable existence. In other words, if you look in the soul itself, you won't see intelligence, you won't see love, you won't see discipline, but these powers are carried within the soul, and when they will emanate, it will be a particular power. A particular koach. But because these are at their very start a particular koach, it's for that reason that eventually they emanate and when they are channeled into the body, they're able to be facilitated by a keli, by a vessel. So much so they're able to marry that particular keli, that particular limb in the body and become so fused together that they become one and calling upon bringing about all the rules that we discussed in last chapter on how the two become so deeply intertwined, the energy and the vessel become so married to each other. But the important thing is if the soul's energy would be interacting with the body, would be just pure neshama, pure infinite, pure or hanefesh, light of the soul, not the kochos. It would be the pure or hanefesh. Then the body would not be able to facilitate it. Then the kalim would not be able to, 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 to assimilate them. It's because from their very, very origins, they are already kochos mugbolim. They're already limited powers. This is the idea. Um, maybe in next class we will do a little bit of a try to practice, bring that down a little bit more into a possible, possible physical example, which I'll try to demonstrate, but let's leave it for next class. For now, I want to go back to the parentheses in the beginning. Um, when he said that the soul and the body, the, the energy of the soul, the spiritual powers of the soul become enclosed in the body and each one in its own limb, <coughs> he adds in the parentheses over here a very important idea. Again, this is in the beginning of chapter three, two lines into the parak. Now, this that the power gets gets encompassed and become enclosed in the limbs is not the majority of the power. The spiritual powers of the soul are so powerful. What becomes vested and assimilated and interacted in the limb is the tail end of the power. It means our powers, for example, our intelligence the amount of intelligence that our brain, physical brain, can process and 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 into its physical experience is just a minute little drop of the greater power of intelligence of the soul itself. Which is to say something amazing, that when the soul is not in a body, our intelligence is considered super intelligence compared to what we know when we're inside a body. And the same is our vision. The power to see is so much more expansive than when it is limited in the vessel. Because the vessel does not encompass the entire power it encompasses only the nether part of it the lower part of it and this that the kochos becoming bislapshus enclosed in the limbs who is the most the, the the last element of it shanikra which is called geshem shabaruchni it's the physical of the spiritual that means that in the soul itself the spiritual soul the, the closest, which is pure spirit, and spirit and matter don't go together. So he's trying to explain 
how can a spiritual energy take a hold and 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 or how can the physical body and physical organs grab hold of a spiritual of a spiritual thing just like i can you we understand that if i ask you and i want to give you over an idea and i tell you here you know i'm i'm giving you over here take it in your hands you can't grasp in your hands a concept the hand doesn't take a concept we can understand that a physical vessel has no relationship at all to a spiritual energy so how can a physical vessel even grab onto how does it even so there has to be a latch there has to be a handle what's the handle so hashem i'm purposely made it that way that every spiritual energy its external part is closer to the physical obviously on each level so the 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 the, the, nishama, the most external part of each power of the soul has somewhat of a little it's called geshem shabaruchni the physical of the spiritual now the physical of the spiritual is still spiritual but it's the physical of the spiritual it's like the body of the power not the soul of the power now watch the thing the physical organs of the body the physical organs of the body they they have a spiritual side to them as well not the soul the physical organs in the body have a spiritual side to them and the way the marriage takes place is that the, is that the spirit of the physical latches onto the matter the physical of the spiritual and that's how they click with each other. He calls it in Hebrew, the Geshem Sheberuchni, the Gashmias, the physical of the spiritual, becomes a handle for the Ruchni Shebe Geshem, for the spiritual of the physical to take hold of it. Now, now this sounds might be a little far fetched. So let me try to give a little bit of an example to that. Regarding the Nefesh, the soul itself, we know that the, the place where the soul flows. Is in the blood in general blood is 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 a little more refined than the rest than meat and bones so the soul could not enter into meat and bones but it could go into the blood the blood is a little closer to spirituality it's not spirit but it's a little closer it's a little adler spirituality means refined and, and elegant and abstract a physical means chunky so within the chunkiness of the body the blood is the more refined element but that's not enough in the blood itself the reason why the blood is hot is because the steam the vapor the, the blood creates vapor and that vapor that's very very refined that's the and it says that the neshama catches on to the vapor of the blood to the steam that the blood gives off and that's how it enters the blood it the soul enters the bloodstream as it says kidam hanefesh nefesh abasar bedamhu the soul of the flesh is in the blood many times kianefesh kiadamu anefesh there's a bunch of sukkim like that both in parshas noach and in parshas um i think in parshas acharemos torah repeats a bunch of times about how the blood is, is the nefesh because the nefesh the soul connects to the blood how do they link up with each other they link up with each other the physical the the lowest element of the soul is 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 connectable that's the geshem of the ruchni is able to be ch ch uh, tapped it's able to connect to the vapor in the blood which is the ruchni shebegashmi and that's how they connect and that's how the soul gets anchored down in the body just like it is in the soul in general the same is in, in each limb and in each organ and each particular power that the ruchni shebagashmi sorry the gashmi shebaruchni the physical of the spiritual for example the physical element of the spiritual power of the power of vision the the coarsest element of that spiritual power the power of vision is able to be tapped by the most refined element of the physical eye and that's how they connect as he says it's the lowest level which is called the physical of the spiritual but but even for that to happen it's that's only 
if the kochos, if the powers would not be meant to be go into a vessel, if they wouldn't be that way, then they would not be able to settle into the vessel. Even there would be no way of connecting them. But since the kochos are meant to be internalized, essentially, alkain, therefore, dakus ha'ivarim, the more refined elements of the limbs, hanikra ruchni shebegashmi, which is called ruchni, which is called the spirit of the physical, who, bebchenaz keli, that becomes a vessel, lahalbish, to enclose, ulahatvis, and to grab onto, esageshem sheberuchni, the spirit that's in the spiritual. Fine. Now we go back. Um, we go back to explaining what we started off in the in the in the in the sif to explain that the nefesh includes within itself particular powers, and it's those particular powers that become that are called or pnimium, and they are meant and they are what they. It's only those powers that are able to vest themselves into vessels. However, he says, now where are those kochos initially? They are within the soul. And now he's going to continue exploring that idea, how these kochos exist within the soul. Although they are not the soul, but they are invisible, they are invisibly present within the soul. This is right after the second parentheses of the chapter. And we continue what we learned yesterday. The powers, when they are included in the soul, in the soul, they too are limitless. They are not in a state of a power. The chachma, the wisdom, is not wisdom. The power, the emotion, is not an emotion. It's an it's so abstract that it's not. You cannot define it by any definitions. do as it is known. The koyach hasechol hayuli haatzmi. I'm just going to give a very, very, very physical example to this. We all know that cherries come from the from a from a cherry tree, and cherry trees, like every other tree, derive its power to vegetate from the ground. Now, I will, if we were to chase the cherries back into the earth, into the soil, obviously the soil has to have the power of cherries in it, because if it would not be in it, it would never be able to show up on the tree. So the cherries are there. But the cherries exist in the soil and in non-existence as cherries. Because you know why? Because blueberries are also in the soil. And bananas are also in the soil. And squash are also in the soil. And tulips are in the soil. And coconut is in the soil. Wheat is in the soil. And barley is in the soil. Grapes are in the soil. And potatoes are in the soil. Sweet potatoes are in the soil. You can go on and on and on. Spinach and broccoli and every kind of plant and every kind of of flour and every type of everything is in the soil. Yet the soil is not a mixture of bananas, squash, and uh, watermelon. Uh, the, the soil has within it a power to vegetate. All types of fruits got embedded already into the soil, lemons and jalapenos as well. Yet when there exists in the soil, they exist in a non-existent state. You can taste the soil from today till tomorrow. You're not going to feel jalapenos. You're not going to feel radishes. It's there in a non-existent state. The same is also the kochos when they are in the soul. As he says over here, Kidu, as it is known, the koyach ha-seichol ha-hiyuli ha-atzmi, the power of seichol, ha-hiyuli. Ha-hiyuli means it's, it's, it's original state bef- in its... And its essence, ha'atzmi, as he says, of its essence. Hayuli is a is a word that the um, the, uh, the the philosophers would use. Hayuli means something in its most undressed state. Hakolul be'etzamanefesh. So this power of the intellect that is included in the essence of the soul, einoi bepchines sichli klal It doesn't have a trace of sechol. It's not in any way, it doesn't have any taste, smell, or feel of intelligence. What is it? It's soul. Whatever soul is, we don't know what soul is. It's the power of vision that's in the essence of the soul is not vision at all. 
however. But we say they do exist. Yes, if you plant a if you plant a cherry in the ground, a cherry, a cherry pit, you're gonna get cherries. Why? Because you're gonna call forth the power of cherries that are in the ground to produce a cherry. When it will come out of the ground, when it will come forth, it will be all cherry. But while it's in the ground, before it even emerges out, it's not cherry. But yet it is a koach for cherries. And when you are communicating with the soil, you're communicating with the cherries that are in the soil to come forth. That's the communication of farming. When you plant seeds, you communicate with the non-existent cherries to come forth. But if they would be non-existent completely, you would never get cherries. The fact that you can, and the proof to that is, there is probably a gazillion infinite possible types of fruits that we don't have because God never put them into the power of the soil. So we don't have them. Thank God for avocados. Thank God for, uh, for plums and peaches and for really nice fruits. But hypothetically, God could have envisioned infinite more di di different types of plants and trees and fruits which don't exist because they were never put into the soil. It was never made in it. It was never put in the potential. So that which is, is, is. So the same is with the powers of the soul. There is a particular set of powers. They're there, but when they exist in the soul, they're not there in an existent state. But when they shall come out, they come out each one in a particular way. The power of intelligence, if it will come out, will never be a power of emotion. It will never be love. It will never be the power of, of, of discipline when it emerges outward will never be sweet and kind. It will always be discipline. <laughs> that's its power. Uh, that's what he's saying. <laughs> their ray. When they come forth, <laughs> when these powers emerge outward and they become enclosed in the limbs of the body, what happens to them then is that they descend. They descend from their infinity and they come in a very specific manner. And that's called symptom, a contraction. It contracts from its undefined simplistic state and it comes out in a very particular way. Just like the earth that could produce sugar and it can produce a lemon, two opposite things. It can be sweet or sour. So earth itself, the very same soil, can be like this or can be like that. But um, in order to derive one particular power, the earth must focus the earth has to listen very closely to the seed when the seed is telling it i want sugar the earth has to keep all of its sourness away and all of its sharpness of jalapeno away and then it has to emanate just the just its chesed just its sweetness so that's the point but that's a tzimtzum it now contracts itself it comes forth in a manner of tzimtzum the soul contracts itself in order to be able to interact with the limbs of the body, in order for it to become an indwelling energy, a panemius, an internalized energy. And when that happens, they come in a limited fashion. And when the nefesh puts the brakes, contracts itself, and delivers, what does it deliver? It delivers, remember we said earlier, the physical part of the spirit comes forth because the ruchni of the, of the power is too high, too sublime, too, 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 too abstract for it to connect to the body. The lowest element of the spiritual power, that's part of the dilution, that's part of the tzimtzum. Till they become close to the spirit of the limbs, remember we said earlier for them to get married, the higher part of the body has to connect to the lowest part of the soul. Leos nitfas behem to become grasped by them. This is also the reason. This that the light and the internal energy of the soul, is so divisible, becomes so separated in the limbs of the body. It's not equal in all the limbs. That the, the spirit of the soul is not equal in all the limbs. Because the energy of the soul is not the same. When it is in the head, like it will be in the body. In other words, he's, he's continuing to explain if the soul's energy would come down as, as is, without its symptom, 
it would just emerge as is in its infinity, then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be so 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 divided. The energies of the soul are very very specified. A higher energy in the head, a lower energy in the bot in the torso, a lower energy in the hands, a lower energy in the feet. It goes slowly. It 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 has like a bunch of circuit breakers, as he says. The energy that's in the head is much higher than the energy that's in the body. He's not talking about the very fact that we are alive. That energy is called an ur makif, an encompassing light that is equal the entire body, because that comes from the nefesh itself. It doesn't come from the kaychis. However, the 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 chayos pnimi, the internal life, that is very different. It's an interesting idea that he points out. The brain, the head, has the is the, physically the smallest the smallest um, space in the body. The head occupies the least real estate in the body because the, the 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 smallest acreage, like the the. The, the, the other parts of the body are larger. The head is the smallest. Yet, as we know, great things come in small packages. It's the, the smaller the organ is, the usually the more sophisticated the energy. Because the more ruchni, the less kashmi. The more spirit, the less matter. So the ima yosh arosh, arosh, who had, who cut on, it's smaller, becamos, in, in, in terms of its, uh, that, uh, in, in, uh, in um, kamos means, uh, no, what's the word? In, 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 uh, Quantity. It's the least in quantity, compared to the rest of the body. The main revelation of the soul is in the head. That means the highest powers of the soul are in the head. And in the feet, it's much less. And the reason is because the revelation of the light and the highest of the soul is in accordance to the level, according to the quality of the limbs, of the vessels. Because the energy from the get-go is meant to be in a slapshos, in a state of enclavement, vitfisa, and meant to be grasped, according to the chemistry of the vessel. As we said earlier. Imkain, therefore, alkain, according to the refinement of the vessel, will be the revelation of the light of the soul. The head, the brain, as we spoke about the gray matter that's in the brain, it has a very fine material. That's why it's a more of an appropriate vessel. It's closer to the spiritual state, to the light and the highest of the soul and the energy of the soul. Because it's a more finer vessel, it's a more elegant vessel. That's why the, the light of the soul is able to shine there with more revelation. Which means all the higher powers of the soul that are in the soul illuminate in the head. But in the body, it becomes diminished compared to the head. Because in the body, in the torso, he means the light of the soul is much is already constricted. It's not as powerful. Uberegel and the feet. Interesting. The feet are made up of coarser material. The the the, the substance of what the feet are made out is a little more chunky and dense. The light of the soul is is less is more contracted. And the same is with the powers themselves. Okay, let's leave this because I don't want to go over a half an hour. We shall continue in the next class. Um, let's have Mashiach here now. The merit of our learning.